This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Hello and welcome to Into the Multiverse. I am your host, Josh Peck. In case you missed last week, I have suffered a minor knee injury. It's not too big of a deal, but I am going to need surgery. That is why I'm recording this at home. I am unable to get to the wonderful, beautiful Skywatch studio, but I'm going to be back there as soon as humanly possible. In the meantime, I did not want to take a break. I didn't want to take a hiatus. Uh, so I- I- instead of doing that, because since Into the Multiverse has, has started, we have not missed a single week. There have been times where I've even had... Uh, uh, Sharon Gilbert fill in for me a couple of times. That, that That's happened. Or Christina has filled in. My, my lovely, beautiful wife has filled in a couple of times. Uh, so we, we've not missed a single week of Into the Multiverse. I did not want to start now. So I'm going to record. Uh, I'm, I'm recording the next couple of weeks at home uh, with this with this fantastic backdrop in my bedroom uh, until after the surgery. So that's what we're going to do. Thank you for all your prayers. Again, it's not a, it's not a super big deal, but it is, uh, it is something that's immobilizing me to a large extent as of now, but that's okay. God is good and we are doing great. So quantum weirdness of light. We've talked about this before uh, on this show uh, and I'm excited to talk about this because it seems like a couple of months ago and I'm surprised that this got past me, but back in uh, October of 2017, uh, there was an experiment that uh, that, that that has confirmed this really strange property of light, actually by shooting photons into space. Can't Again, can't believe it got past me, but... Um, Light's fast, so I, I, I don't always catch everyone. But anyway, uh, if you haven't had a chance to do so, make sure you subscribe, click the little bell, uh, tell YouTube you want to be notified. And if you're not notified, because it happens quite often, just know that every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. you'll get a new episode of Into the Multiverse. Uh, okay, so quantum physics two-faced nature has been put to the test over and over and over again, and every time it seems really weird. Uh, so this time, again, this happened back in October of 2017, so it's been a couple of months, it's been a few months, but... Uh, but But this experiment is actually an older experiment, but they just uh, conducted it on a larger scale. So it's interesting. Um, Physicists have uh, have split and merged light and then bounced it from a satellite before testing its weird properties. And, you know, even over a really long distance, it still is very strange and confusing and is messing with people's minds. So a team of Italian physicists uh, have have what's called, uh, taken part in a, an experiment called the Wheeler's Delayed Choice Experiment. It's similar to the quantum eraser experiment, if you're f- familiar with that. We still have not done an episode on that experiment because I want to buy one before we... I want to actually do the experiment on uh, on the show to show you guys uh, exactly how it works because it's a little complicated and I can explain it with the diagram, but if you got to see it, I think that would be a lot cooler. So that's why we haven't done an episode on that yet. Um, but it's, So it's similar It's similar to that, but it's an experiment called the delayed choice experiment. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about what that is, but... Uh, they, they did this on a large scale in an effort to see if the process can be scaled up from a previous recorded distance of about 90 miles, it's 144 kilometers, to about 3,500 kilometers, which is roughly 2,200 miles. Uh, so this experiment has shown that the results still hold true and that the, the form of uh, the form a wave of energy takes seems to depend on how a conscious mind looks at it. Now, there are other ways to look at it. It doesn't have to be that. We have talked about that uh, on the show before, too, that there are other interpretations of this experiment. Uh, this is the most popular one, that by looking at it, you somehow, by observing it, you somehow um, alter the results. It could be that. It might be that. But there are other ways to look at it. I mean, e- even just the fact that if you add anything to the experiment, you're basically adding a clump of uh, 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 particles uh, that all affect fields in different ways, and they all have interactions with other particles. So it could even be something like that. Could be the observation thing, or there's a couple other ones that I'm still uh, trying to get my head around to understand a little bit better before I discuss them on this show. Uh, But the insanity behind all this is fascinating if it's if it's the the observation thing, if observation actually does affect reality on a quantum scale. Uh, so let's look let's look at the history of this experiment. So back when quantum physics was uh, uh, still in its infancy, the smartest minds in the world of physics were leaning over uh, uh, ever more heavily into the mathematics of probability to explain what they observed. So as useful as math was. Uh, the consequences were still really profound. Some, like Albert Einstein, figured that the 
the, the, the probability stuff was temporary, but the more solid laws would one day be uncovered. Uh, so it only looked like like probability because we just didn't understand enough. But Niels Bohr, on the other hand, said that quantum mechanics uh, was complete. And while our brains don't cope well with trying to imagine, you know, maybe as a solid part of reality, uh, that that's still reality. So, you know, that, that there's still some type of probability and not everything is set in stone. So this all came to a head over a series of thought experiments and actual uh, real experiments uh, to do with light and matter of all kinds, really behaving both as a wave and a particle. Uh, so there's something called the double slit, slit experiment. And we've done episodes on that. You can go back uh, in, in the archives of this show to find... Uh, episodes that we've talked about the double slit experiment, but this 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 maybe wave of uh, you know this maybe wave nature of a particle of light means if given two slits, it'll pass through both of them before hitting a screen on the other side, causing a pattern as each possible path interferes with uh, one another. It's an interference pattern. That's that's the fancy word they tack onto it. But if we if we put something in the way to detect which path the light actually takes. Then we don't we don't see that interference pattern anymore. We just see the pattern of the the two slits. Um, now Bohr Niels Bohr was adamant that these these maybes uh, or or wave functions or whatever that they collapsed into uh, into into something more objective, depending on how the experiment was conducted. And Einstein thought that that was just garbage. He didn't believe in that at all, uh, as it meant that the reality of a particle, complete with its position, velocity, spin, all that stuff, didn't exist until we measured it. That that was Einstein, and understandably so. That was Einstein's problem with it. But it turns out that. Niels Bohr was actually right, at least as far as we understand physics today, and it's been tested in numerous ways. Um, but there's been one uh, big question. What exactly constitutes an experiment? You know, d Does light cement itself as a particle or a wave at the moment it interferes with the relevant equipment, or are our minds part of the entire setup? So an American theoretical physicist, John Archibald Wheeler, an awesome name, but he, he devised the clever way to test this about 40 years ago. And from this experiment later on in 99 or 2000, somewhere around there was the quantum eraser thing set up. Uh, so putting it simply, he, he thought, you know, why not trick the light by conducting one kind of experiment that forced it to choose its reality. And just before it hits the last detector or another piece of apparatus, uh, randomly forces it, uh, randomly forces a sneak peek. So th th this was the basis of a number of tests done, which is uh, called the delayed choice experiments. Now, in this latest version from just a, a few months ago, the researchers split a pulse of laser light using Italian space agency's uh, Matera Laser Ranging Observatory, or MLRO, so that a photon could either take a shorter path or be sent on a slightly more convoluted uh, detour. So the two paths merged before heading on a several thousand kilometer journey to an orbiting satellite from where the photon bounced back to the planet's surface. Uh, now back at the MLRO, a quantum random number generator, which is pretty much about as random as we can get, uh, it chose whether or not the, a device delayed the incoming photon. Uh, now letting letting it through would mean that the researchers knew which path it it took the equivalent of measuring it as a defined particle with a clear history. So if they let the photon go through the detector, or well, not they, I should say, if 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 the random, if the quantum random number generator allowed the particle to take, you know, to go go through the detector, then we would know the path. But if it didn't allow it, like if the de detector was like turned off or whatever, uh, that then we wouldn't we wouldn't have any way of knowing the the, the path. Now, importantly, the, the, that random decision was made, the, the, the quantum number generator, that, that random decision was made well after the photon set off on its extensive, extensive journey, thousands of kilometers in the past. So they send the photon on, and then that's when it's decided if it's going to be measured or not. Now, the researchers found they could affect whether the photon was perceived as a wave or a particle well after it passed through the important parts of the experiment. So it's as if the random decision to let the photon pass through made it go back in time and choose one path 
while delaying it meant it still had a history of possibilities, each of uh, each of which would then interfere with its detection to reveal a wave like nature. So it's like if you if you know the path, then it behaves one way, and if you don't, if the path can't be known, if the path is random, then it behaves a different way. How would the photon know that? And and it it makes that decision before the decision is even made. It, the photon already is on its way, and so before the photon is expelled, or, or after the photon is expelled, the experiment, this random number generator, decides if the path is going to be known or not. Yet the photon is already acting as if it knows, which is it's it's, it's weird and trippy. I mean, it's 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 really really strange, and it's it's hard to get our heads around because it seems impossible. Uh, so there, you know, there are people that say it's like the random decision let the to to let the po photon pass through. It's almost like it made it go back in time and choose one path, while delaying it meant it still had a history of possibilities, uh, each of which would then interfere with its detection to reveal a wave like nature. Now, this doesn't completely solve the mystery of what it means for a wave to collapse into a particle or how our minds are involved, uh, but even after. Even it, it seems like to put it in like a metaphorical sense. Uh, even after the horse has bolted out uh, from the gate, it can still wait until the finish line to decide which race it ran. So it, it's it's really weird. Uh, go ahead and check out sciencealert.com for more information on that. There's there's a lot more and it's really cool. Uh, so don't know what to make of it, uh, but it's cool that they're still doing experiments and trying to figure this out. And again, there are other ways of looking at this and interpreting it. It doesn't mean consciousness has to do anything with it. Uh, it might, it might not. Uh, or time travel or any of the like really weird things that people put out there. We just simply don't know right now and there are more reasonable uh, explanations. Uh, I, I have yet to get my head around those, so I don't want to. Um, I, I don't want to prematurely talk about them on this show yet. But uh, I am looking into those, and we will see. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll have to do an episode on the quantum eraser stuff soon. Okay. Again, if you haven't had a chance to do so, make sure that you subscribe, click the little bell, and if YouTube just decides that you don't need to know when we <laughs> upload these. Just uh, ju just remember, it's every Thursday at 9 a.m. All right, thank you all so much, and until next time, take care and God bless. With all the talk in media today about women's rights to be heard and treated with fairness and decency in all public platforms, Donna Howell's timely new book boldly establishes how it was Jesus Christ himself that settled this issue a long time ago and at a time when it would have been considered revolutionary and prophetic. Bible scholars know that Jesus, while recognizing appropriate gender roles, intentionally began the first women's empowerment movement. But why did he do that? The answer to that mystery is in the Bible itself. Now in one of the most talked about new releases of the year, the Handmaiden's Conspiracy by best-selling author Donna Howell. The permanent changes Jesus made regarding women's rights, their value, and their role in delivering his message to the world is brought to light. And if God decides to raise up a radical, he only needs one voice for an entire Great Awakening, and it could be yours. Yeah. This is Reverend Donna Howell. Yeah. Once you read The Handmaiden's Conspiracy, you'll never think about the church that Jesus Christ started and that his apostles decreed in the same way again. The Handmaiden's Conspiracy, available March 1st at skywatchtv.com. Follow the cultural and historic backdrop behind Paul's words in the New Testament that correct the record on some of the most misinterpreted scriptures in modern history in relation to the issue of women, their leadership role in the church, and understand properly what Paul was responding to when the epistles were written. Skywatch TV is proud to announce one of the most anticipated, talked about new releases of the year, The Handmaiden's Conspiracy promotional offer. When you order The Handmaiden's Conspiracy from Skywatch TV, you'll receive Skywatch TV's brand new, beautifully bound, limited edition, red letter King James version of the Holy Bible with Apocrypha. 
In addition to the Old and New Testaments, this never-before-released, one-of-a-kind deluxe collector's Bible includes the ancient apocryphal books like Enoch, Jubilees, and 15 more ancient texts that the disciples of Christ read and quoted from. This gorgeous, limited-edition Bible is available exclusively from Skywatch TV and holds a retail value of $80. Yours absolutely free for a limited time. That's right, absolutely free when you purchase the Handmaiden's Conspiracy promotional offer. Also included in this once-in-a-lifetime offer is the Donna Howell collection that includes all three of her runaway best-selling works, Radicals, Redeemed Unredeemable, and Final Fire. Sold separately, this unprecedented promotional offer retails for $160. Yours now for only $29.95 plus shipping and handling. This is one of the most exciting promotional offers we've made available, and you don't want to miss this opportunity to receive all four of best-selling author Donna Howell's works, along with the remarkable, deluxe collector's King James version of the Bible that includes the ancient apocryphal books of Enoch, Jubilees, and 15 more ancient texts. In fact, order numerous sets to give away to every Bible enthusiast and student you know. The Handmaiden's Conspiracy promotional offer. Order now at the Sky watch TV store or call 1-844-750-4985.